Welcome to Just Another Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Soderberg. Today, we are joined by my wife, Taylor Soderberg. The best thing that's ever happened to me is joining this podcast. Uh, we're here to talk about her engineering field and the, the job she has at Plymouth Engineering in Plymouth, Maine, moving to Newport, Maine. So we talked uh, how she got involved in engineering, uh, where she went to school, what jobs she's had, where she's worked, what she likes about it, uh, and so on. So we had a lot of fun talking specifics of engineering and Taylor's work. So really, really, really enjoyed this podcast. I was able to have a conversation with my wife. Enjoy, everybody. Thank you for listening. Here it is. How's it going, Taylor? Good. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. I had to talk to my wife. <laughs> uh, so this is uh, uh, interesting because you're in the other room. Um, I just like the consistency of the way that the podcast looks and feels. And so instead of being in the same room, we're on Zoom from the living room to the uh, den or the yes. office, and we're going to do it this way. But welcome to the podcast. Welcome back Thank to the you. podcast, I should say. Yeah, yes. This is the first um, time you've been on it like this, because last time you were on the couch next to me. Yeah, so I don't think I could handle the microphones. Was that the one? Yeah, it's probably the one. I'm going to make sure I talk loud enough this time. <laughs> yeah, you're fine now. But okay. we, we talked to you last time because we talked about uh, married into this. And it was before we were actually married. Um, it was back when we were still engaged. So we got married in August. It was a week prior. Yes. Yeah, so I'm just saying that like, you were Taylor Bemis at the time. Now you're Taylor Soderbergh. And this is a podcast more about what Taylor does for a living and what she does when she went to school for and all that stuff. So I'm really excited to do this. But it's nice to be able to talk to my wife um, on a recording on a Monday night for Wednesday release. So welcome yes. to the podcast. Thank you. Um, I guess I'll start a little bit about myself because yeah. some people don't know. Um, from originally from Lewiston, um, I went to UMaine for civil engineering, so that's what we're mainly going to talk about. But uh, Justin met me in my senior year. I was just about graduated, had about a month left. Um, but after graduation, I moved down to Portland for a little while, and that's where I did um, transportation engineering for the whole summer. But um, I guess I'll back up and start where I first was interested in civil engineering. Um, so when I was little, I wanted to be an interior designer. And you know, in Maine, that's not really like the best thing to do. You're not going to make a bunch of money and nobody really is hiring interior designers. So it slowly evolved to architecture. And then one, one year in, um, in high school, I went to the summer UMA, UMA, yeah, University of Maine Augusta program. This is where you got to pick different areas. So one week I did architecture. And I learned that I thought a lot more than other people did like it's for some things. So we had to build these little models. They gave us a scenario, it was like end of the world type thing. We had to make little models of storage containers and turn them into like houses and stuff like this on a mountain. So you'd make these big scaled models and I'll send Justin a picture so you can show one. But I was like, everything needs to be to scale. Can we actually build this? How are we going to talk of the mountain? How is this feasibly going to, like, going to work? And I know architects do think of those questions, but I was more fascinated with like structurally, how will this work? And that's how I kind of moved to civil engineering. So um, <laughs> in uh, high school, I took the civil, the civil, the engineering design LRTC program. So it's like um, a dual program that you can go to like uh, the technical school. And so that's where I learned all the basics of engineering and but kind of went into what discipline I liked because there's like mechanical engineering and industrial and there's plenty of millions of others. <laughs> this is where I kind of like civil because it was kind of like, it's just a lot more common in buildings and stuff like that. Um, and you're a very civil person, so. <laughs> but I mean, what do you first think when you think of civil engineering? A lot of people are engineering in general. People say trains sometimes and it's the weirdest thing. Well, I feel like before I met you, it was more like, what is engineering? I have no idea. Like, it's just, it's something that people design things. Like, it's not like, I didn't have an actual like basis. I mean, my mom, she was a secretary or a receptionist for uh, CES in Brewer for a number of years, but it was back when I was in high school. So I don't, it wasn't like what I cared about. I wasn't in the engineering field and didn't care about the engineering field. So it's like, you know, I don't know much about what the def different designations of doctors and medical people are because I'm not in that field yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean like or I don't have to go to the hospital that often so the different levels of civil engineering uh civil engineering is probably the ones that's the most 
broad. Um, well, broad. I mean, like that. There's not like not, it's not, there's no name in it. Like there's no like you know structural engineering makes sense because well, you're engineering structural stuff. You know. Well, that's what it kind of leads into. So there's a couple of different disciplines of civil engineering. It's a very broad umbrella, but it deals with your built environment type thing, or your infrastructure. So there's structural, which I'm doing, geotechnical, which is the ground, <laughs> um, environmental, which I can't stand. It's, it's too hard for me, not too hard for me, but not my favorite. Um, then there's um, civil, which is actually like another part of the ground, but geotechnical is more like soils. And then um, there's transportation, which is another interest of mine, but I can get into that mm. further along. Um, let's see. So I guess with that, um, so in college, I did civil engineering. I didn't quite know what discipline within civil engineering I wanted to do, but it, um, I went into, I found I most liked instructional engineering because it just made most sense. Like, um, statics is just basically adding forces in one direction, forces in the other, and they have to equal. They have to balance it out. That's just made most sense to me. And then I really was really fascinated with transportation engineering of kind of like the urban planning, you know, like your utopia city. Like I'd love to build, like think about building the best way to build a city and stuff like that. But I mean, unless you live in a big city with a huge budget, you can't really do that around here. Which is kind of funny because you're into so, so like what you read is like post-apocalyptic, like end of the world books. Yes. And you want to design a city and it's like your favorite things are like some of those reading things and things that like the city's been destroyed because of a post-apocalyptic, because of a apocalyptic event. But maybe you'd be the perfect person to have there so you could rebuild the city afterwards. Yes. But I also like to think about like how could this city best utilize multiple functions. So I guess if the world is going to crap, then I'd like to think of like ways we could it'd be good for to um save it i guess <laughs> um so let's see um but yeah as a in college i took mostly structural and transportation classes along with all the requirements and then that brings me back to when i graduated and met you <laughs> so then i moved to portland unfortunately <laughs> and i worked for lewis berger i did transportation engineering so i applied for both both structural and transportation. They hired me for one and said, you just move wherever you want. Just start with transportation. So that was a lot of like doing construction plans of like where design construction signs go, which is kind of kind of fun, but kind of monotonous at the same time. And I wasn't there long enough to really get in the nitty gritty. But a lot of it was just road design and not any of the big utopia city designs that you think were more interesting. I remember you did a project uh, in Rhode Island where you had to walk, count yes. cars in an intersection, which I benefited from because of the fact that you got beer from Massachusetts and Rhode Island yes. for me and brought back. But um, yeah, it was, you just sat in a parking lot and counted cars in an intersection. Yeah, so I drove all the way to Rhode Island with this little box and you click the buttons which way they turned. And I sat in my car for like two hours in the morning and then later that night I had to go back out and do peak time and sat hit buttons if I really picked my hotel room out correctly I could have done it from my hotel room <laughs> and I do have six hours to Rhode Island I don't know it was a horrible traffic but it was a lot of fun I like getting out of the house in that sense but um the yeah, traffic traffic counts are fun I like analyzing them to the point of like peak flows and stuff like that or determining if you put your restaurant here is there a lot of traffic that'll drive by you it's kind of fascinating um <laughs> it is, I mean, it is. It's just a different type of engineering. It's, it's one of those things that, um, again, you don't think of an engineering person. Like when you think the broad spectrum of engineering, people don't think counting cars in an intersection. But someone has to do that, and that falls under the category of an engineer um, because of yes. an engineering company is the one that does all the work on that intersection. So makes yes. sense. Um, but then that leads me into... I worked at, um, can you think of it? I worked at a construction company for about a year and did, um, did uh, pro a project management assistance. And then I did safety training, which sure, I was a safety lady. So I'd go and yell at people to wear their hard hats for a year. Um, that was because I wanted to move back up here with family and a bunch of other reasons. And my other company got bought out. <laughs> um, but then I really found that I, I liked engineering. I really want to go back to it. Project managing construction people is not, not my forte. Um, 
So that's where I end up to where I am now. It's Plymouth Engineering. So I do structural mainly. We kind of dabble in everything because we're a little bit we're smaller. But um, speaking of fun projects, <laughs> I didn't go to Rhode Island, but we, we we did an island project. So they had these containers, and they were flying like two of them. I think this guy was going to make its workout area. It's a desk, kind of like Justin's room, but. <laughs> bigger and so they're trying to figure out how to helicopter it from the land into an island and they figure out how to set it on and all this stuff and I was like I don't know it was just kind of fascinating so we just went all the work to fly something in I'm sure just ferrying over some building materials might have been cheaper <laughs> but, but yeah, people... had to, you had we had to do the engineering of like how the buildings could connect or how would you I mean I did the found the sonnet tube foundations for that or the deck and the snow loads and the wind loads because it's on an island and well, so was... one of the cool things is that you had those in unique projects that that i would never i mean i work for a brewery but it's like i don't have that i mean i had the opportunity to like when i went to new york city for obc yes. back in 2017 and, and when i went iceland. to iceland but it's like you don't have um you know, there's not every day you don't do this, but like there's kind of cool things that every once in a while you get a project that's kind of like, oh, this is kind of cool. Like someone's, I say stupid enough, like crazy enough to bring a helicopter or something over like that when you could build it on there, but it's like someone's got to figure, I want to do this. Someone's got to figure out how to do it. And that's your job. Yes. That's part of your job. Yes. Um, we do have some cooler small one projects like that. I mean, sometimes I'm just given this big package building and I need to design a foundation for it. Other times it's, chimney supports for well obviously for a chimney but some weird chimney supports where they're like look at the manual okay they say this tall and then you just draw a picture sometimes it's just looking up information for people but i mean mainly for engineering i think the thing you learn in college is where to look something up and then does it make sense to you but i don't you don't know everything it's but you just have to know where to look it's essentially what you need to do I mean, but, yeah, and it, you always tell me that like, you're looking in a book or you have a book or you have mm -hmm. these random books. You talk, you're moving offices now. Yes. Same company, but you're moving offices. And uh, you're saying you have to move all these books over. And it's like, yeah, there is a lot of places you have to go and look up that stuff. And a lot of times it's like, it's the same thing in me, though. It's like we talk about this in the office. It's like, I know a lot of things about computers because I used to do computer repair. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know everything. And also, I use MacBooks now, where I used to use PCs and everybody else uses PCs in the office. <laughs> so there's sometimes where I just have to Google something or look something up on how to mm -hmm. do something you don't retain all the information in you. That's that gets yeah. ridiculous. So you're going to need to actually look it up in a book and you have those books to do that for you. It makes your job easier. Yeah. So we're very fortunate in the digital age that, I mean, if I was born a couple decades ago, it'd be a lot harder to do because I do Google everything. If I go like, how does connection work? Like, I don't know how it looks. I'll Google it real quick. So then I can finish designing it. Or sometimes you just Google is like your best friend. <laughs> But um, no, I do like paper copies a lot better. My steel, my steel manuals, like got in uh, college. It's my baby. It's my favorite, favorite book. <laughs> but it's funny because you also like paper books when you read too. Most of your reading, you do yes. you like. You'd rather have a paper book. You do read on a, on an iPad or on your phone, but you do like paper. Um, mm -hmm. But it's the same thing. With my dad, years, and he's always liked physical books. He likes the smell of books. He likes turning the pages. There's yes. something to say about that. Like even me reading comic books on a on an iPad, it's like you don't. I feel like a completion. You feel like you're just skipping. There's no ending to the book, if that makes yes. sense. Like an actual physical book, you turn the last page and you can tell how far away in the book you are <laughs> and all that stuff too, which can be good, but can be bad because in a digital book, if you're just flipping the pages, you're like, I don't know, this book could go on forever or it could be ending soon. Whereas a physical book, you know, but that's also reading, not engineering books. But yeah. That's true. I think I'm just a very visual person in the sense for, for, for example, um, when you design a building, you have to think of the, all your loads that can be applied to the building. So you have like your snow, your wind, your structural, or not structural, your seismic. And then you, um, but you have this manual called ASC 710. So it kind of tells you how these loads get applied and different load combinations. But I can picture where these things are in the book. So I'm like, okay, I just need to flip to that page. And I can picture, I don't remember the page number, but I just, it's very visual. When you go online, you can't like, I know it's on this left hand side of the page, like halfway through the book. You can't do that online. No. So you can, you can do control F and obviously it helps with some diagrams and things, but. 
it's funny too, because like I was mentioning earlier about you going to have especially special projects where you had to go to an island or, or figure the island out and do different things. Mm-hmm. You also mentioned to me a lot like about different projects where you're like, oh, I'm doing working on this building or this building is getting a new addition. Yes. This is, and it's like one of the cool things I used to love about um, things like graphic design, for an example, is that like when you're mm-hmm. a graphic designer doing jobs for other people, you get a variety of different projects you get to work on. As an engineer, you do the same thing where it's like you don't engineer building specifically for Plymouth Engineering to build it like like meaning that Plymouth Engineering is not expanding their building yes <laughs> you're building it for you're, you're doing work for other people but you get to work on this yes. kind of a building a school gym or an office or a house addition or a thing on an island mm-hmm. and stuff like that uh like I said back when I was doing some solo graphic design work it's like I'll do some work for a church or a concert company or a you know Jiffy Lube or whatever it is, you get to work with a bunch of different companies. It's just kind of cool with engineering is that you've got a bunch of different structures you get to work on, not just. Yes, we also have the liability. Like, uh, I designed the beam holding up the building for that. <laughs> I hope it doesn't fall down. And that's why we don't go in that building anymore. No, she's kidding. Yeah. No, no, no. We, I, have it, I have it all set. I also oh, have nice mentioned- modeling software too that you have to do redundancies with but what were you gonna say i was just gonna say that you, you did you mention plymouth engineering i didn't you went from your job you, you were at so safety then you were what you're doing now but did you say it was yeah. plymouth engineering i think I, I think i did yes right. um plymouth engineering which is in plymouth maine we are now where we're now to Newport for in a month but it'd be nice it's bigger um we'll actually have a i think it'd be a nice, like a nicer office i'm stoked to have my own area um but yeah i guess to lead into that so um, one of the big things is Maine has a very uh, old workforce in general, but engineering is pretty bad. You, I work with mainly older men. <laughs> I'm like, there's an, two other women in the office, but none in the structural department, which is five or six of us. Um, we are looking for a entry level structural position. <laughs> so hopefully we will get some young people in there, but there's definitely a big disparity between um ages and genders i'm it's definitely i've noticed it in like in classes too i'm like the fourth female out of 60 people <laughs> it's funny how you mentioned that though because it's like um you were one of you were one of two people at work at Plymouth engineering that's a woman woman or whatever but like the idea that um it's an older male thing but it's better than when you were a safety person because it's like at least this way you're in i, I don't know when you're, you're telling these stories about trying to tell someone to put their hard hat on and it's like a 200 pound you know 50 year old male trying to listen to a young 20s female yeah. who's not 250 pounds <laughs> and, i think it's nice oh sorry <laughs> no it's like you're, it, it's like it's like trying to get across this information to them it's like no you need to listen to me and it's like well you're a petite younger person yes. it's hard to do that yes yeah, so people don't like listening to anybody, especially on a job site. I found that it was hard, and I don't, I don't like, I I'm just not loud enough for it. It's just, it was a lot of effort, so it was not socially, but it was a lot of effort on my part where I was not utilizing my skills better than I could be. Like prior to college, I, well, during college, I did a lot of customer service. I did retail and a variety of different jobs and I got very good at it believe it or not I'm a very quiet person but Justin hasn't seen that customer service side of me truly yet I'm really I was pretty good at it <laughs> but you just you just get so like for me personally I just so drained I was like Justin knows when we go out to a party or out with friends it gets to a point where I'm like okay my social limit is reached I am ready to go home let's clarify that that was back before February of yes. 2020 yeah <laughs> well i think i've turned you into like uh we both turned into pumpkins at the same time now well I, yeah there's a little bit of that there's a little bit of just me getting older and, and wanting to get up earlier in the morning makes me go to bed earlier as well <laughs> i also feel like um i am also like you with that point where it's like there's just a limit there's a time where i'm just like okay i'm done like i just, I just want to go home and and it's not like that for just for work it's like for fun things too like we've always you and i have been that since the day i met you which is basically like okay we're done and it's every yeah. once in a while where you're still like, no, 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 I want to stay. Like, there's times like at camp when it's like, okay, on a Sunday, I'm just done. You're like, oh, uh, I want to yes. do some stuff. And you still want to hang out. But there's also times the opposite side where it's like, okay, you're done, but I'm not. But it's just yeah, the majority of time. Yeah, involved with you. It's, uh, it's trying to reel Justin in. But it's just, it's, it's, it's for the most part, yes. It's, it's like, okay, we're done, moving on. And it's, I, you know me in customer service. It's like, 
you talk about just being done. There's, there's weeks where I get home. And I'm just like, I just don't want to talk to anybody mm-hmm. anymore. It's just, and that's why some Sundays I get every Sunday off. Um, if some Sundays you and I are just veg and watch TV and relax mm-hmm. because it's like, I just don't, even when it's non COVID times, because I just don't want to interact with anybody. I just want to be with my wife and hang out and not do I anything. I don't want anybody to touch me. I've had you say yeah. that multiple times. So, but it's still sitting near me, but that was pre COVID. Now you don't have to yeah. deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. It's just part of that. So it's kind of cool. But one thing I will say, I mean, is I didn't go to college. So I am very, very, very lucky to be in the position I am in. Um, hard work, dedication, you know, obviously goes to it. My work ethic shows uh, why I got the job I have now at Orono Brewing Company. But um, with you, it's nice to be able to say that you actually like one of the few, as a few people, because there's not a majority of people who graduated UMaine and are actually in the field they want to be in and you're mm-hmm. using the degree that they got at just say UMaine but any college yes. um and you're in Maine which is really cool so that's a really cool thing mm-hmm. to see that you went to UMaine you're from Lewiston you went to UMaine <laughs> graduated now you're actually doing the career in the state of Maine yes. uh which is really good what lo- 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 UMaine loves that stuff so it's really yes. cool to see that but um but yeah so like you're in that field like I think since I was 18 years old it's like, I don't know what the future looks like. I'm, to me, it was always like, okay, two years from now, yeah, I could be working at Best Buy still, or I could be working at somewhere else. I could be doing something else. Uh, when I worked for the concert promotion company, got to the point where I was like, oh, okay. And then seven years for a church. And it's like, when I started applying for jobs up here, I was applying for like store manager positions at PetSmart <laughs> and other stuff because I was, just, I was just ready for a change. Whereas in your field, you might change eventually with what you are like structural yes. or transportation or whatever, but you're, you're in that field for a long time. And it's really cool to see you use your degree for the future. And it makes me happy because I feel like I have a steady, like I don't have to worry about it. Yes. I think that's one of the reasons that I liked engineering is because you, everybody needs engineering. I mean, granted it's harder in Maine per bigger cities. So that's why I went to Portland. It was no jobs in the Bangor area. And that's why it took me a little while to get what I got. But um, yes, no, there's definitely a nice stableness to it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, I mean, like I said, I, I mean, I don't care because she's not going to listen to this, but my ex being a, hair, a hairstylist just didn't, like it just, for me, it was just like never going to make, it never was going to be satisfying to me. It was never like felt me, felt me, felt solid <laughs> and, and, and the future looked good. I feel like both of us now, like, okay, Justin works for a good company. Even during this trying times, things are going to be okay. And you work mm-hmm. for a good company and you're engineering, you guys are getting work and doing work and you're in a good field that we're both going to be good, barring any crazy. Yes. Outside Lowe's, of the pandemic. Lowe's land on our feet. Because of the fact that we're in something we have. And obviously now we have the, I have the experience and you have the degree to do that, which is really cool. So it's like uh, talking engineering is really cool to me, but I, I, I also learned so much stuff from you because you can say, <laughs> but you also speak to me. Well, like I know what you're talking about sometimes. And I you know explain that. it to you. This is how you're going like, to learn this beam da, 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 and I'm like uh well what does that mean <laughs> that's fine you learn somehow you teach me some beer stuff I learn I'm trying all the beers you're like you know what? I don't not like anymore <laughs> okay now I don't <laughs> not anymore because you're pregnant yeah we haven't really talked about that much honestly on the podcast I think I mentioned it to Sean last week offhand um but we didn't okay. announce it until the week prior and because we hadn't announced it yet I was on with Josh Moulton but because I was on the Josh Moulton, it was coming out on Wednesday, but we hadn't announced it yet. So only for a hand set, for a quick second last week on the podcast, I talked with Sean about having a baby. But we're having a baby. Yeah. Which is really cool. Yes. We don't have to go all into that right can, now, but. You couldn't contain it. I was surprised of like, that you did, that's not all you talked about your last podcast. <laughs> I talk about beer. It's another good subject I wanted to talk about. It's so. true. I haven't listened to your last two. I'm behind on my podcast. I know you and are. Jeff, you. But so, um, yeah, so like I said, so you're doing a job that you would like and you're working for a company now that you like, which is great because I've seen you work for a company that you liked in um, near the Portland area in Yarmouth, yep. um, but they got bought out and it was a beginning thing and all that stuff. So I saw that kind of like you saw the ending coming kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and then you worked for a company that wasn't your favorite company <laughs> that we struggled through that where it was like, there was times where you're just like, I'm done. I don't want to be there anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you end up getting this nice job at Plymouth engineering and you're happy and you come home and other than inter-office politics, uh, other than, um, the dealing with, female. <laughs> well, dealing with people in general, cause that's probably what most of us come home and talk about work period. 
if you have a good job and you like it, I think most people just find something to complain about. And not saying that you complain, but it's like, oh, I complain. It's just stories from the day. It's this person did this, and this person did this. It's never really like, oh my god, I can't stand my job. It's 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 usually just like a this person did this or this person microwaved this or even more when you're having your morning sickness. But like, and so it's, it's nice to see that. You fish, I'm gonna murder them off. <laughs> Well, as we talked about, I think I talked about it with another friend. It was like, that's a no-no, period. That's what I was saying. I couldn't tell anybody at the time. I'm like, I'm going to hurt somebody if they make fish again in the office. Like, this shouldn't be done in general. And if you told me my food stunk, like if I microwaved, sometimes the buffalo chicken dip smells a little not the best. But if somebody told me that didn't smell good, you know what? I wouldn't bring it in again. And we told him multiple times, I'm not going to into this. No, it's just funny. It, it's true. It, it, that's what you do with that. You're that's that's the problems you're having at work. That's good. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Like it's good to have that as the problems, and you're doing something you love, which is awesome. So. Yes, I guess. I want some goals. I want to talk about some goals. Yeah. <laughs> for engineering. Absolutely. So for engineering, you should be licensed once you have your own, or if you have your own practice. But your goal is to get licensed. There's two level, two levels. But the beginning level is to get your fundamentals of engineering. So you take a test, basically any engineer can take it. You have to have a, you have to have a degree at some point, mm -hmm. but um, you have to be from accredited institution. And then you take this test. So I took mine senior year, just went for it. And so I have my FE, Fundamentals of Engineering. And then the next is you have to have three years of four years of experience. I have to double check because they changed it under a professional engineer and then you have to like fill out all the stuff you did and then you have to go for your big license test and that's when you can start getting your own stamp and stamping drawings so i'm about uh, a little bit over a year yeah a little bit over a year towards getting my license license um i'm a little bit behind because obviously i didn't do structural engineering when i got right out of uh, college so I could technically kind of go back and get my junior, I mean, my transportation engineer under my belt, but it's not worth the three months I worth there, hassle. But um, yeah, so that's main engineer's goal because you get a, I mean, most people get a pay bump, but then you have all this more responsibility and liability. <laughs> well, it's like that even if it, minus the pay bump, it's the next stage in your career. It's like- You're professional. You some, well, yes, you have something to work for. Like, it's not, it's not like- we get your job and you're just doing your job every day. There's something to move forward mm -hmm. towards. Um, and that's what's pretty cool about that is that you have that aspect of that. And, and something that I'll try to work with with the next couple of years is getting my Cicerone beer server training, mm -hmm. which is, again, another thing to like a certification to have to go along with you. And that's something, like I said, you want to be, you went to school to become a professional engineer, not to be yeah. an FE. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so that'll be a big test that you'll have to deal with me studying with. Nope. I'll have you quiz me. Let's help we both learn. Nope. Yeah, so you're going to be able to design floor joists. That's my goal for you. <laughs> Why? <laughs> That's the first thing I picked out. I like the table. I have very limited it's space in this nice mind, babe. Pick out. What? It's very limited space in this mind. You can't take it up with that information. I don't know. With my pregnancy brain, I don't have any room for anything. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so you'll get your FE or your PE within a couple of years, hopefully, right? It's a four yes, years. Yes, past that. Yes. What? Is it four I years? I think it might be four years now. I looked it up and I forget. I really do. I know it's not soon. <laughs> um, but you've already been, to, you've been doing it for, is it since you got your FE or since? No, it's since I've been working under a professional okay. engineer. Because I know my FE... Even though I took the test senior year, it took me a while to get my actual paperwork through. Um, well, a lot of things, a little bit of just me being me. But yes, yeah, so now I do have their certificate and I am officially an FE, but I've taken, I took the test in college, which take it in college for anybody who happens to be listening about engineering, take it in college because there's a lot of stuff you won't remember after that they will ask. <laughs> uh, is there a specific kind of building you want to work on or something you've like wanted to like, do now that you're in the position you're in is there like a project that you like you 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 know if someone brought to you you'd want to do well yeah there's actually one that a couple of weeks ago that was brought to our attention at work and it, it fell through money or wise the project wasn't going forward and it was gonna be like this four-story building it was gonna be i can't remember it was budget like um apartment buildings but it was just this big four-story shell 
type thing, but we were going to work with another company. They were going to do the drawings. I was just going to give all the structural members and they were just going to input it. And that's my favorite part is going through picking up the members and doing all this stuff. Just going through the drawings are my, not my least favorite, but I'd rather not do. So it's kind of like I got to be, I need to be super organized for it, which I love. And it requires me to be able to communicate with this person, very organized things. And he'll be able to, that person will be able to like counteract their right, like bounce off their ideas for this stuff. And it was kind of cool because we've done a two or three story building. And that's when you have to start worrying about seismic loads and stuff like that. Because normally if you look at a one story building, you're just going to worry about wind <laughs> versus seismic because seismic will shift the same way yeah. wind will do in a theory. But yes, I think overall goal, I kind of want to design our own house because this goes back to architecture and interior design. Um, yeah, I think that would be my dream to at least design somebody's house the way I want it. <laughs> what you really want? It may, may not be the, the house we buy hopefully in 2021, but it will yeah, hopefully think, be something in the future. Mm -hmm. I definitely have the capability. I, even if I get like, you can, cause you can get like the general floor plan layout and I just do the rest of it. But I mean, building homes aren't too complicated. The more complicated you make them, the more expensive they get. So <laughs> it'd be definitely cool to make it the way we want it. We got, um, um, what, we got six months until the baby's born. So you got six more months of work before you get a couple of weeks, I'd say, off. <laughs> yeah. That's really not being off. You're just not at work. Um, mm -hmm. So we're, we're doing June. Yes. June 1st now, right? Or we got to check with our doctor. Uh, right? so we're, first week of June. <laughs> yes. The baby's Are you excited? Over. I'm excited. We have a, I was looking through all the stuff we had to do. Not have to. We have to do. But I was like, we need to space it out because if we wait the last few months, it's going to be like a mountain of stuff we're going to do. So well, this room we're in right now, the podcasting room that I have right now is turning. This is going to come down. This is going to be the baby's room. Um, so I will be moving uh, for season three into our bedroom. Um, yes. We talked about that last night. So, which is okay because, I, I mean, we, we have this baby. It was mm -hmm. planned. It was decided we wanted to have a baby. We're excited to have the baby. Excited to find out the gender, hopefully in a couple of weeks, but maybe not until January. Uh, and then we'll get to share that with everybody else too. So we're really excited for that too. So um, our future engineer or no? Future engineer, future intelligent kid. Oh, really? <laughs> hard working, hard working. There we go. Hard working. Well, our two, our brains is not going to, this kid's not going to be smart. Come on. I found these little baby books. It's like civil engineering for babies. Quantum phys I'm not getting the quantum physical ones because if I can't understand it, I'm not going to the kid understand it. Well, so maybe I'm you'll learn. Maybe I'll learn. I've, I've you can read it first. About, I've been told about quantum physics and some of the other stuff. I'm going to stick to engineer, structural engineering. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> also, so, so people are always like, oh, future, uh, you know, Orno Brewing, Brewing Company associate. I'm like, um, by the time that kid's going to be allowed to work, it's 21 years from June. Like, that's a long She's time from now. Massive conglomerate. You guys going to have like manufacturing facilities everywhere. Well, well it's funny because like if people say, "Oh, you know, future basketball player." That's fine. They kick you play basketball at seven, six years old, five years old. Mm -hmm. But like when you say something like, "Oh, future this employee," it's like, well, if you can't work there till you're twenty-one, that's a long time from now. Yeah, I don't want. I wouldn't want to impose any career choice on a kid. I feel like as long as they're a successful society contributing human being and a good person. Yeah, they have to put hard work in. They have to make sure they're not lazy. Well, they're gonna run board of Maine, right? That's what they're gonna do. They're... There you go. They're no, gonna no, be they're gonna artistic. Oh yes, yeah, so they have to have some artistic between us. I mean, just in general. I mean, if you teach them young enough, they're gonna learn something. It's not that you have yeah. to have some talent, but I feel like if you just teach them early enough and put it to them, then they're gonna learn something like that. But I'm excited for it. Yes. <laughs> Um. Wow, you talked a lot. I told you I could do it. I know. Although I had everything prepped a little while, like, like a couple weeks ago, so now some of it. Oh really? Yeah, I'm putting all the pregnancy. <laughs> well, I wanted you to do all your at your office today. No reason to listen. I don't want to be listening in the office. I even hate talking on the phone around people. <laughs> they uh. <laughs> She works in a small, a small office, but it's, there's a bunch of people in there, but it's an older building. So it's very, um, sound travels. Nothing's private. Just let you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm excited. This is, I love learning engineering stuff. Uh, I can talk about, I mean, do you have anything else you want to talk about? 
Oh, not, not the top of my head. I mean, I was trying to think of some really good engineering examples, but other than that helicopter one, that was the most entertaining. Well, how about this? What are some of the places around the Bangor area that you've worked on? Now you're just making hard questions for me. Um, we know down the street, the um, 162 Parkway, the Gilman's Electric Building. I was working on that today. We're doing some structural columns. I don't know what I'm allowed to not say and say. <laughs> well, here's the deal. So you're under the projects you're working on now. You've worked at Hudson. Oh, yeah, Hudson. I had Dorothy Dorothy Dix. Dorothy Dix. No, that was my other job. Where I'm not saying that, but I'm saying in general. <laughs> Places oh, you had to expect or work on, uh, or yes, Hassan for both places. Um, I worked at the base too. I did a bunch of stuff at the base. Um, John Baps. Oh, the nursing home. What? John, John Baps. Remember the new building, right? <laughs> the one. Yes, one of the babies at the contractors. <laughs> but you see, you worked on some cool. I mean, you worked on some big projects. Oh, uh, Dacomas. Oh, yes, that, that was a nice one. I loved inspecting that one. That was always cool to see how this building from the ground up came. And it was always like from, because I wasn't uh, doing engineering when I was in there. So from an engineering standpoint, it was kind of cool to see everything. Because one of the hard things for me is I find that I could engineer anything, but I don't know what common building practice is. So I can be like rambling off something and they're like, why are you doing that? We don't do that. <laughs> Or I think, I think my biggest mistake over the past year or so, because obviously, other than that brief safety thing, I don't know much about construction. I think I listed off a two by, it was some wood member. I was like, oh, we can't do a two by something. And they're like, that doesn't even exist, Taylor. <laughs> I was like, oh, because when I, I have these spreadsheets, I just plug in these numbers and it gives me the stuff. So technically on paper, if you had wood that size, it could or could not work. So I don't, it doesn't just tell me what's existing. I could do like, um, I don't know, some weird shape and it would tell me if it would work because it's based off of the moment of inertia. No, but yes. That's pretty cool though. Like I said, you worked on a bunch of cool buildings around the Bangor area, which is pretty cool. Every time you say something like that, I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. You've also done like houses and, and like inspected houses and done things like that, but that's not like, Oh, I have a funny story. Okay. So every once in a while we do foundation designs for trailers. It's usually a quick, you go make sure the trailer is hitched up correctly or solid, on a solid foundation for these realtor companies. And well, one morning I was given one that was down the street from Warrington. I was like, okay, I'll just hop over. This is the first one I've done by myself. And the problem with Google Maps is that, I'm notorious for getting lost, but Google Maps is not right on the house. So sometimes I have to go around guessing which house it is. So I can, there's a trailer, it has to have a foundation trailer. So I pull in and I was like, this one doesn't have a real two sign. There's a car in the driveway, there's nobody should be here. So like, how to call my boss? <laughs> it's like, that's not the house. I almost inspected somebody's house at like seven in the morning. Like I'll be rummaging around, tearing off the skirt. <laughs> like imagine if you're sleeping <laughs> and you see somebody trying to get under. <laughs> So the other house is a couple houses down. The numbering was way off of Google. They need to get their shit together. Because <laughs> <laughs> I can't handle it anymore. And I haven't been on one since. I hopefully hope it's not because of that. I hope it's just coincidence. Yeah. I'm totally capable of doing them. But um, that's pretty there's a lot of spiders underneath trailers. I don't know how to crawl under them, but there is spiders. I didn't like that part. <laughs> So good today, just cleaning up my office. I was organizing for some of the move. There's a big, there's a cup on top of our bookcase. Yep. So I'm like throwing all this stuff, like, oh, this is throwing away, throw it away. And so I took the cup and I was like, oh, there's really their dirty cup up here, like paper cup. And I really jumped out of my feet. There's bees in it. It was a cup full of like three or four bees. Apparently Dead? our chimney was leaking. Dead, yes. Apparently our chimney was leaking and it must have used to catch water. Well, bees went to drink water and died in there, but it scared like living daylights out of me because I was like, I don't expect a cup full of bees. Your, your workers, coworkers are just playing tricks on you. Yeah, well, I've already, this, after the spider jumped at me on work, everybody knows, don't screw with me. 
I like to scare you. You can watch videos online of you scared, getting scared. Yeah. Uh, someday I'll get you. Yeah, sure you will. You're actually less scary, or scary. You're less jumpy now that you've been pregnant. I just don't have the energy to react. <laughs> exactly. Well, you're starting to pee my pants. Yes, exactly. I just basically <laughs> just touch your arm and you're like, I gotta pee. It's, I blame it all on you. Know. Yeah, sure, whatever. But <laughs> now that people have actually got to know Taylor Soderberg, engineer, <laughs> instead of Taylor Soderberg, just my partner, my my fiance and now wife, that you actually get to talk about your actual career and your passion. I'm pretty yeah. excited. Um, this is cool. I like talking to you. I like uh, that you actually talked, which is interesting because a lot of these podcasts that we do together, I talk most and you just sit there and relax. You tend um, to dominate conversations. <laughs> well, you have nothing to say usually, so it's not my fault. I just don't want to talk over you. That's teasing now. Um, but yeah, so it's cool. So uh, Taylor's an engineer at Plymouth Engineering in Plymouth, Maine, which now will be in Newport, Maine by the end yes, of the year. Super name. <laughs> Yes, um, if there's engineering needs, I will most likely work on the project. So it is That's pretty cool. So I'm glad you were able to come on and talk and do this because I'm excited for people to hear about your career and your job. Thank you. So I will talk to you soon, maybe in like 30 seconds when we're done and we turn off. Yes, it's time for a snack. <laughs> oh, it's snack time now, huh? Yeah. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for coming on, Taylor. I really appreciate it. We'll talk to you Thank soon, you okay? Guys.